Hey guys, it's the Average Gamer here, back with another video, and in this video, we're going to do a review. That's right, UAG's review on the Arcade 1UP Atari Giant Stick. So if you like stuff like that, why don't you give us a thumbs up, consider subscribing so you won't miss videos like this, and hit that bell notification. Anyway, we'll get into it right after this. So like I said, this is UAG's review, and in this video we're going to be reviewing the Giant Arcade Joystick for Atari. So the Atari Giant Joystick. Yes, the big debacle that was the Pac-Man redesign. I said, you know what, I'm going to give it a clean slate. Forget that happened. Let's, let's come to this product with an open mind. So that's what I did. Out of the joysticks that were about the uh, Atari one, the Pac-Man, and the Disney, this one had the most appealing to me. Though I wasn't the biggest Atari fan, it did look nice and I think it would be a cool addition to a game room. Boy, yeah, let's just say they leave a lot to be desired. So let's talk about the aesthetics it looks nice however when you get to hold it it feels very cheaply made um, it's it's really cheap plastic almost to equivalent to like some kind of plastic item that you would buy at the Dollar Tree so I would really say a hundred and fifty dollars that's probably a lot um, and then there is the gameplay yeah the gameplay let's get into the footage of that shall we so here we are at the loading screen and one of the cool things I like about this is that it still has the iconic sp splash page with the sound um, some of their newer products have gone away from that and the interface looks pretty cool you have uh, some of the the main games that people want to play right here in the front and it gives you a layout of the controller and how to play it now this is a centipede and it to be honest with you feels like it's the arcade ROM I'm not 100% sure and um, there's no details anywhere to kind of verify that you also have Millipede who play plays similar. Um, but I'm gonna launch uh, let's see asteroids right now and um, the joystick on this the, the it just doesn't feel intuitive and this is definitely the uh, the 2600 ROM. Um, it really sucks. It's really bad. Um, it just doesn't play well. And that's because um, joystick like the way you forward to thrust left is to move counterclockwise right to move clockwise and I forget back what back was but um it doesn't feel very fun so we'll jump into missile command and this is definitely not the um arcade ROM either it gives you the directions and it doesn't feel as bad playing this you know there's certain games that you just need the natural thing like this would be the trackball we're using obviously the joystick um it doesn't play bad it plays pretty well but definitely not the uh arcade realm um sometimes the the joystick not being fluid can cause you to over step where you want where you were aiming so and that will affect the gameplay ultimately 
And then this is the interface here for the other games that's included. Um, and you press the top button, it'll go back to the tough the front of the screen. And now we're gonna play Super Breakout, and this one is probably one of the worst um, of the bunch. And this is because of the joystick; like it doesn't move very f fluently, so you're you're wiggling it a little bit just to see if you can get it. So it doesn't move fluid, it, and it it's just a really, really, really bad experience in terms of a gameplay. Um, and and I it's probably true to the 2600, but um, yeah, just doesn't feel well playing at all. I like how you know you have this other interface in the, the amount of pages and everything like that to see the games. That's kind of cool. Um, one, and then we're gonna play Tempest, and this is probably the worst arcade port I've ever seen for a game. Um, it's I, you know only way I know the only reason why I know that this is Tempest is because it said it it doesn't resemble Tempest whatsoever and again this is not to knock um, arcade one up support of it this is how it looked on the 2600 it was really bad and and on top of that the the joystick it's not very intuitive playing playing on there it just doesn't feel right and call me spoiled playing on other platforms that has spinners and trackballs and things like that. This is just a game that I would stare away. And then this game less, you know, leaves a lot to be desired. Um, the interface is cool. I'm happy with that. But that's enough with the game thing. So let's let's leave it at that. So as you can see. I think the majority, if not all of these uh, ROMs are the Atari 2600. The only one that I'm thinking that may not be is Centipede and Millipede. I know that Asteroids is not the, uh, the arcade ROM and definitely not Super Outbra Outbreak. Those games were terrible. Not to mention the way the joystick moves, it doesn't move fluent to play those games quite well. And Tempest, that's probably the worst arcade port I've ever seen. Are they true to their Atari 2600 days? Yes. But um, I, I just don't see $150 here. I just don't. And I, and I guess that's why they gave so many games on here, what, like 46 games? There's that. The, on, a, on a good note, though, Arcade 1UP says that, you know, they're not interested in sideloading and, and having people get illegal ROMs on their devices, like um, the Halo team on the, and the uh, Neo Geo. It does allow you to do side loading, so there's that. That's the saving grace of the device. <laughs> Ironic, don't you think? With that being said, though, if you were just to keep this in a corner of your game room, it's probably pretty good for that. It looks nice, um, but again, 150 bucks? No, I was able to nab it for 110. And at 110, I'm still thinking that I paid probably a little much. I think 50 bucks is where I would lean towards getting this device. So let's look at the design. So here's the joystick. Let's go over the design. You have a player one button, a player two button, and an on and off switch so you can use for wireless. You don't need to use this if you are plugging directly into device wired, um, but leaving it on leaves you to the light to let you know that you're playing or that it's on uh, a button, which is weirdly placed. Um, this is where the uh, micro USB comes out and a nice little Atari symbol in the back there. The base plate to rest your foot, which feels very cheaply made. The shoot button and the joystick, nice, it clicks 
but um, yeah, it's not very fluent in terms of the games. Um, and then we have the HDMI box, the same one that we had for the mini consoles to play the Pac-Man or whatnot. It does have an HDMI out, uh, micro USB for powering. This does need to be powered and they do not provide you a plug. You have two USB ports in the front for up to two player joysticks. And you can also sideload on this bad boy. Um, I don't believe you can sideload arcade ROMs, but you do have that option. As you can tell from the video, uh, it again looks appealing, but some of the button choices and things of that nature, I guess the mapping just doesn't make sense to me. So you have the two buttons in the front for player one and player two. If you hold down player one, it will reset. It's unnatural to do that while you're playing. You have to bend over. The joystick in the base is a little too short. You could put your foot up there, but then you get scuff marks and everything like that on the, on the joystick. The base to hold the joystick down when you're playing feels very cheap. And if you play a little bit too rough, it seems it will break easily. The biggest problem for me is probably the select button for the game, the A button. That's located on the top of the base, but all the way towards the back and unreachable to even your feet, foot, unless you really want to stomp on the machine, or bending over. Again, joystick is just too short. And the joystick, again, I told you, it, it feels very cheaply made. Uh, not fluid whatsoever. Uh, the cool thing about the joystick is it does take two AA batteries for wireless and it also comes with a uh, micro USB that you technically should be charging the device with because it's like a little puck. However, you can hard use that to hardwire the controller. Totally up to you. But you'll have to source one of those, one of the two, on there. There's no um, plug part um, outlet adapter there. Um, I mean, everybody has a spare hanging around for a phone. It would be nice for the price that they're, you know, requesting for this device to have that included, though. I, I just don't see much saving this device whatsoever to be quite honest with you um, so let's just say this I probably saved the commun community a few dollars and I would recommend to stay away from this product this product is not for everyone chances are if you get this product it's just to make your room look a little nicer and that's it I wouldn't even recommend playing it it's that terrible to be honest with you um, I really wish I had a funeral for this device because it was dead on arrival again I took my um, just you know I, I came with a clean slate and uh, there's not much that can save this device I don't know what Arcade one up was thinking with this device. Um, yeah, really not a good look. Arcade one up, maybe the uh, Disney one is better. It looks nice, it definitely doesn't look like Pac Man, that's for sure. Well, guys, with that being said, again, I can't recommend this product. In fact, I would, if you really want to wait, wait on this, I'm sure it'll be in the clearance bin pretty soon because it's that bad. Anyway, guys, just wanted to say thank you for stopping by. Um, if you like content like this, please consider subscribing to the channel, um, giving us a thumbs up, and putting on notifications so you can hear about the next Dead on Arrival product that's out there. Anyway, guys. Thank you for stopping by, and until next time, guys, keep gaming. Appreciate it.